we left off here in section 4.1 where we discovered that just kind of trying to guess by looking at a graph or a scatter diagram of whether or not a relationship is moderate or strong, eh, it's not great. Um, I mean, you can kind of do it, but how would I know if this is really moderate or if this is really strong? And the answer is you don't really know. So we wanted a number that would kind of help us along with making those decisions. And that's what the correlation coefficient is. Okay, so the correlation coefficient is abbreviated by the letter R. It's a numerical measure of the strength and direction of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Now there's a lot going on there, so let's, let's talk about it. Strength, that means it's going to give you a gauge of whether it's moderate or strong or weak or perfect. It's going to tell you that. It's going to also give you a sense of the direction. If the number is positive, it's going to be a positive relationship. If it's negative, it's going to be a negative relationship. And it's only dealing with linear relations. That's all we work with. It will not work for nonlinear relations like quadratic or exponential or various others. There's actually quite a few nonlinear relationships. We're not looking at any of them. The only ones that matter to us are positive linear and negative linear. In this course, that is. Okay, so then if it's only for linear relationships and it's between obviously two quantitative variables, otherwise we couldn't do any of this. Now the formula for it is kind of brutal. This is, if you look at just the parentheses on the left, that's the z-score, right? Remember the formula from z-score from chapter three? So it's the z-score for every x value, then the z-score for every y value, then you multiply them, then you add them all up, and then you divide by n minus one. Now we are not going to do that because I'm very nice. I'm going to let us do it entirely with the calculator. So we're going to use the Lin regression feature on the calculator, and we'll learn more about that a little bit later. Next thing to learn is that R is not resistant to outliers. So if you have some data point that's way out there, it can pull R towards it and can set R off a little bit. R has no units. Um, it means like if your data set was dollars, it doesn't matter. R is still R, right? It has no dollars, it has no cents, it has nothing. It has no unit that goes along with it for various reasons that I'm not gonna get into, mostly algebraic. And then R is not a guarantee of a linear relationship, even if it's got a very strong value. And that's a little bit hard to take at this point. The whole reason for creating R was that we want to know whether our relationship is moderate or strong or whatever. And it does that for us, but only to a certain extent. There's a whole lot more going on with these relationships that we're not covering here. That would be covered in chapter 14. So if you want to learn more about that, you'd have to go um, study chapter 14. But having a high R value alone doesn't mean you have a linear relationship. It's a good evidence towards a linear relationship. It might be there, but it's not guaranteed. All right, so let's think about R for a minute. The R is obviously extremely important, so what are its properties? Well, first of all, its sign will tell you the direction. So we set up here that R is going to give you direction. This is how it does it. Um, if it is, oops, sorry, I'm having problems there. If it is positive, then that means it's a positive relationship. It's a direct relation. If it is negative, that means it's a negative relationship, i.e. an inverse relation. It is telling you the direction of the relationship. The absolute value of R describes the strength. An absolute value, if you remember from algebra class, means when you take the absolute value, it will turn it positive. The bigger the absolute value of R, the stronger the relationship is. That means that if you have an R value that's close to 1 or negative 1, so like negative 0.9 or positive 0.9, those are both close to 1, that means it's a strong relation. Weak relationships will actually have R values that are close to 0. And again, it could be positive or negative. R measures only linear relationships. So if R is close to zero, it might be strong, um, it, or excuse me, it might be a strong nonlinear relationship. So again, R only is linear. So if it's not linear, you might get an R value that's zero, but it doesn't mean that there's no relation. It means it wasn't a linear relationship. Okay, so then we have right here, the rule of thumb for interpreting strength and direction from R. So if R equals negative 1, that's a perfect negative linear relationship. Then if, so that's at 1 or negative 1. So negative 1 is a perfect negative, positive 1 down here is a perfect positive right there. Then between negative 1 and 0.8 is a strong relationship. Between 0.8 and 0.5 is a moderate relationship. And between 0.5 and 0.3 is weak. 
and then we're saying from negative 0.3 to positive 0.3 is statistically no linear relationship whatsoever. And then the same numbers happen on the other side. All right, I'm going to try to draw this up for you, and I'll be right back with that kind of shaded in for you. One second. There we go. I managed to get it all in there. Oh, except for the perfects. The perfects are at the dots at the end over there. So we have the strong in the red, and this is strong negative on the left, strong positive on the right. So anywhere between negative 0.8 and negative 1 is strong negative. Anywhere between positive 0.8 and positive 1 is strong positive. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to put the rest of the labels in there. One second. There we go. That way you can see them. So 0.8 to 1 is strong. 0.5 up until 0.8, but notice I put the red dot at 0.8 because 0.8 technically is on the strong side. So 0.7999 is in the moderate. That's the blue zone. And then over here, same thing. Negative 0.799 is in the moderate, but negative 0.8 starts the strong. Then you have your weak, which are the kind of magenta colored, and then your no linear relation in the middle, which is kind of that aqua color. All right, so when you look at this, keep in mind that you can be strong two different directions, right? And they're the same numbers on both sides. So you can have strong negative or you can have strong positive, but both of them are on the edges. And that's what they were saying up here with being close to one or negative one makes it strong. So being in either red zone makes it strong. And then being in the blue zone either side is moderate and then if you're on the right hand side it's moderate positive if you're on the left hand side it's moderate negative and then same thing with the weak right so either direction it's fine it just doesn't matter what do you mean sorry i'm having problems it, either direction it's fine it just that you have to pay attention to it if you're on the positive side then it's a positive relation if you're on the negative side it's a negative relation all right, so now we have to take that newfound knowledge and try to match the scatter plots we have here with the correlation coefficients up at the top. So one of these is positive 1 as its correlation coefficient. One of these is positive 0.83. One of these is positive 0.59 and so on. So kind of take a look at them. Two of them should be very obvious right from the start for everybody, hopefully. The one and negative 1, yes? Yes. All right, so this one is a positive 1. I put a little box around it. Okay, so that one has a correlation coefficient of 1, and down here we have a correlation coefficient of negative 1. All right, so there's the end of the easy ones. So now let's go back and look. So 1 and negative 1 are taken care of. This one is extremely strong and negative, so this one's got to be the 0.95. Oops, I don't know what I pressed there. Stop that. Oops. There we go. Beautiful. So that's that. Now let's see. Taking care of the 0.95, what about the 0.83? That would be the strongest positive relationship we have here. Well, that's positive, this one's positive, and letter A is positive. Well, letter A is the strongest of those positive relationships. So this one has to be the 0.83. Oops, that's the one. It's not as strong as this one on the right. This is actually a stronger relation here. It's negative, but it's a stronger relationship. And you can tell because the dots are kind of closer to that line than they are over here on the left-hand one. All right, so we've done those two. Now we've got kind of a moderate 0.59. That's in the moderate zone, right? And then we have a 0.44, which is in the weak zone. So we have to have a weak negative and a moderate positive. Well, let's look for the moderate positive. Well, this one's positive and this one's positive, G. But it's got to be this one's the moderate one because, I mean, look at it. It's It has a relation. It's just not a super strong one. So this has got to be 0 0.59, right? The dots are kind of hovering around the line. It's way better than this one. Look at this. This is kind of all over the place. But it's, well, I shouldn't say way better. It's a little bit better than that one, which means this has to be the other positive number we have, which is 0 0.11. Yes, this is terrible. If you didn't have that line in there, it would look like somebody just kind of tossed the points up. That's kind of a sign that this basically isn't a linear relation at all. This is a big circle of points. 
this one still has a trend. It's not a circle, but it's it's still got a little bit of a trend. That's why that one gets the 0.59. All right, similarly over here, we only have a couple negative numbers left, negative 0.22 and negative 0.44. Well, let's look. Well, they're both pretty crummy, aren't they? So what you want to do is you want to kind of imagine if there was no points at all or if there was no line at all. So if, the, if that line wasn't there, you could still kind of see like this kind of trend up here on the top and trend down here on the bottom. You can see the trend in here. That means this one's the negative 0.44. I'm not saying it's a good relation. It's weak, but it's a little bit there. Whereas this one below it is just awful. If you didn't have the line in there at all, it would just look like a big clump at the top for no good reason and then kind of going downward from there. If you didn't have it, it looks basically like a straight straight across thing, right? So that's that's not a good relation at all. This is this is very weak. So F is extremely weak and G is extremely weak. And again, kind of imagine to yourself, if the line wasn't there, would I even think there was a relation here? And the answer to F is no. The answer to D is yeah, but light, right? You can see that kind of causeway of points going downward. So that's why D gets the negative 0.44 and F gets the negative 0.22. And I want to stop right there because computing the correlation coefficient will take another video. So I'm going to pause right here, right now, and then we'll go learn how to compute this correlation coefficient for real, not just kind of guess at it from graphs in the next video. So I'll see you then when we'll look at computing the correlation coefficient.